real estate or Bitcoin? That's a question a lot of people have asked me. Now, I've been a real estate investor since 2006, fourth quarter, right before the crash happened, because I saw it happening uh, before anyone else realized it, okay? And I've also been a Bitcoin investor and crypto investor since 2016, 2017. So I've made money in both assets. And i share with you what this website, point2homes.com, has discussed. It's a very, very interesting topic. And what they've done is they've done a five-year research and they thought about, okay, if you were going to buy a house in these specific cities, and I'm going to put 20% down, that initial capital, if I had put it down into real estate versus if I had put it down into buying Bitcoin over five years, which one would I have made more money? And I thought this was very, very interesting because I love both real estate and Bitcoin. So the very first one is uh, New York. Okay, and so they were saying that if you want to buy your medium level home, uh, you're, you're looking at a million and a half. And if you put roughly 20% down, it would be $290,000 roughly. Okay, now after five year difference, there's gone by, they, they evaluated the real estate gain. So if you would have bought the real estate and you would have put down almost $300,000 down or $290,000 down, you would have made profits of four hundred and fifty-one thousand dollars, which is amazing. Like real estate, you, you know, you put like three hundred, and you're making a hundred fifty thousand in profits after for the initial down payment after five years. But that, but check this out. If you had put the same exact money into Bitcoin, remember that down payment of the two hundred ninety thousand. Now over the five years, you would you would have eighteen million dollars. Let me say that again. 18 million. So, so that investor would have put 300K down instead of buying the house. They would have just bought Bitcoin. Today, five years later, they would have $18 million. Real quick, download my free book, Real Estate Investing for Beginners, the ultimate starter guide at myrealestatedojo.com where I teach you how to find motivated sellers, buy their homes at a deep discount, and then have the seller become your own private bank. Subject to, get it now. One more thing, if you're looking for private one-on-one -on -one help when it comes to real estate investing, then consider joining my academy where you sit down with me one-on-one, -on -one. two, you get monthly coaching, three, you get access to my best-selling courses, four, you get access to my video library, and then the list goes on, for just $97 a month. Join me now at MrNoFluff.com. Lastly, the best six-figure side hustle, bicycle flipping. Want to see how? Here's a behind-the-scenes video of how I did it. Go to TheBestSideHustle.MrNoFluff.com. Now, let's get back to the content. Now, this, this chart goes down and breaks down all different cities and stuff like that. But into the story, the story is exactly the same. doesn't matter if you're talking about Arizona, if you're talking about California, but the amount of money that you would make in Bitcoin just blows away the amount of money that you would have made in uh, real estate. Plus, let's talk about some of the pros and cons because they did a great job, okay? Um, now, before we do, I, I also want to talk about, like, look, look at the home the home prices, the median home prices. Since 2020, it has rocketed it up, you know, the inflation assumption. This, this is my assumption, you know, but it's not that hard. That's why the Fed is printing money and they're buying uh, mortgage-backed securities. But look how home prices have got shot up, just like Bitcoin, right? Can you see a correlation? Anyways, this... Let's talk about this author, how they how they um, compared the pros and the cons of real estate. And they said that, you know, the real estate cons are that it's high initial investment. That is correct and wrong. For the average real estate investor that doesn't know how to buy houses subject to, then they have to come up with all the money or they have to come up with all the down payment. Now, what I teach at my real estate dojo and my academy and my profit sharing coaching is how to find these motivated sellers so I can buy their home subject to their existing mortgage, aka just taking over their payments, okay, where I don't have to come up with the whole upfront money to buy their home, nor do I have to come up with all the money for the down payment because I don't give them any down payment. All I do is just 
excuse me, step into their shoes and make their next month payment. So this is where real estate, you know, is a little different depending on your strategy. So it says high initial investment. It depends on how you structure the deal. Okay. Uh, and it says that another con of real estate is non liquid asset. And I totally agree with that. That's one of the things I don't like about real estate is because, you know, let's say life changes. You own 10 properties and life changes and you need money fast. Well, the only way to get your money out is to be become what's called a motivated seller. Okay. Uh, and that means you have to price your house lower than most other people. And the faster you want your money, the lower you have to put your home because not everyone's sitting around with $200,000 in their pockets. Okay. So, uh, that's something to think about, which is one of the reasons I don't like real estate because it's non-liquidable. Okay. It takes a while. I don't want to say non-liquidable. It is liquidable, but it's not the fastest. The other problem with real estate is high maintenance. And that's for sure. As a landlord, as a guy that's owned property, dude, that affects ACs. People will break into the property, steal my ACs. I had to fix plumbing problems. I mean, all kinds of problems you can imagine. Eviction, maintenance, property management, all that stuff goes into it. You know, turnaround, vacancy, paying ads to, to list your home. Um, that most people don't realize that owning homes is expensive and it does cost money. Another thing I don't like about uh, real estate is that the creditors, the bad guys can see that you have this and then they can go after it, okay? For example, in Bitcoin, it's not like that. Whatever I own, no one gets to know. It's, it's my business, right? You know, uh, no one can pull it up and say, oh, uh, you know, pseudo-anonymous, right? Um, so that's another thing that they forgot to put on there is that real estate is, you know, a good eye candy for just ugly people that want your stuff where Bitcoin is a totally opposite, okay? Um, now, let's talk, the guy talked about some of the cons of Bitcoin, which is, it's a non-tangible asset, which which is true, you can't touch it. It's, it's just an idea on the blockchain, okay? Uh, it's high risk, um, and, and, and I think it depends on where you're standing. Like, if it was 2011, 2012, I would say it's a pretty high risk. In 2021, 2022, I think the risk is there a lot more than real estate, but it's not as much when you have Bank of America, when you have uh, Fidelity, they're all getting into the crypto, they're all creating ETFs, they're all, you know, want to be your custodian, these bankers all want to get into it, you know, um, you know, um, so I think the risk has decreased as time has gone by, and there's security issues, and I think that Bitcoin has never been hacked, okay, so I don't know, I know people that have lost their homes through fraudulent deeds, but Bitcoin has never been hacked, so I don't know about that point, okay, now, People do lose their keys, so that could be the problem where you can get hacked and lose your keys if you keep it on your computer. But if you do it right, you write your seeds on a piece of paper or you put it into a hardware wallet or you don't write it on your computer where no one can get it, then, you know, those risks are limited. It depends on your level of education. Now, they talked about some, some of the pros about real estate that is tangible. What that means is you can touch it, you can feel it, and that's absolutely right. So that's one of the benefits of like saying, hey, let's go drive around, you know, and look at my rental properties versus like you can't say that with Bitcoin, right? I mean, you know what I mean? Uh, and the other pros about Bitcoin is multi-investment opportunities, um, which is true. Re the other pros about real estate is that it's long term, which I also agree, you know, you can do wholesaling where it's short term, but most investment in real estate is long term. Some people buy it just to give it to their kids as inheritance. Some people buy, it, you know, to the market shifts because like, we're in a crash right now or whatever the story may be. Okay. Um, and with Bitcoin, some of the pros is that it's low, co low lower cost. That means that if, if someone only has a hundred bucks, they can do it. If someone has a a hundred thousand they can do it someone has a hundred million they can do it so whatever you you got you can get into it you don't have to have a certain amount it's not like you got to be the elite to get into it okay uh it doesn't require fico score credit score any of that stuff you don't have to inspect it you don't have to register it you know it's, it's all bona fide legitimate and you can just get it from uh the crypto exchange okay uh another benefit of uh, bitcoin is that there's no maintenance okay um and not a, not a, not a lot of things, you know, to go with it. For example, you you buy that hardware wallet, you you put it into your pocket, or you put it into your safe, or you put it in into somewhere, and that's it. You don't have to like maintain it or do software updates. So you can frame 
brainware update, but you know, you can just leave it in there and that's all there's to it, okay? Um, it's not affected by inflation. And, and, and I kind of have to argue with, with that because we see a correlation with, with the stock market and Bitcoin. When, when the stocks go down, Bitcoin goes down, guys, okay? And it shouldn't be like that, but as in right now, in the infancy stages of Bitcoin, you know, we have that problem, okay? And Bitcoin is a potential long-term uh, investment. I absolutely agree. I treated Bitcoin when I got into it, uh, 2016, 2017, as a rental property. When, when I got into it, I said, look, I'm going to hold this thing for 7 to 15 years before I and decide what to do with it. Now, some of it I have liquidated to make some profits, but you know, my, my long-term bags are just like rental property. Now, one of the other differences is that with, with uh, real estate, you get positive cash flow, or you can, or you can get negative cash flow. With, with Bitcoin, you could also get positive cash flow by staking it, okay? Not really staking it, but there are companies out there Call lending, like you'll lend your cryptos and they'll give you an interest in it. Okay, kind of like banks used to do interest on your savings. Well, cryptos, a lot of coins will have staking and they, they reward you by putting your money back into the network and they'll give you points or not points, money or, or their own coins. Okay, uh, and the same thing with Bitcoin, you can lend it and get a return on it. Sure, there's a risk, but just like any kind of lending. But 